Hello everyone and welcome to Hockey Up. I'm Brennan and today we're doing a standings prediction video. Now we're going to start off with the Pacific Division and obviously with the realigned divisions within the NHL this is going to make everything look a little bit more different and kind of trickier to uh, predict since these teams typically don't play exclusively with each other let alone for eight or nine games. Uh, but we're going to start off with number eight and at number eight I had the Los Angeles Kings. Now I think this is going to be another down year for the Los Angeles Kings, despite the fact that they actually had a really good winning streak heading into the end and, you know, premature end of the regular season this past season, I still think the Kings are in for a rough year. They've got tremendous young talent in the likes of Gabriel Velarde, Alex Turcotte, and obviously the second overall pick, Quinton Byfield, but some of these players I don't feel are ready, like honestly I don't think that Quinton Byfield is NHL ready, Turcotte and Velarde probably are, definitely Velarde, but I don't think that those two players are going to be enough to make LA a good team this year. You look at their overall lineup, there's so many holes. Goaltending is a little bit of a question. I like Cal Peterson. I think he has the chance to be a decent starter, uh, but I don't think that he's going to be able to, you know, take on the entire load of a starter, so they're still going to need Jonathan Quick to perform well, and he hasn't really done that lately. Up front, Anze Kopitar is still a beast, but that being said, he's kind of the only real notable uh, good forward there. Dustin Brown is still good. Jeff Carter's still good, but, you know, Kopitar is the only one that you can say, okay, he's a true top-line guy. Guys like Velarde and Turcotte will likely turn into that, but, you know, only time's going to tell. On the defensive side of things, Drew Doughty isn't what he once was, but he's still kind of the best guy there. Uh, they don't have really have a lot around him. Matt Roy is decent, Sean Walker, uh, but I don't think that's a, a real good blue line. And overall, there's so many holes in this lineup, I don't think that they're going to have a good year. At number 7, I have another California team with the Anaheim Ducks. Now, the Anaheim Ducks had a rough season this past year. John Gibson statistically had one of his worst years, and yet people still think that he's one of the best goalies in the league, and I don't understand it, but either way, um, Anaheim does have some young talent coming in. Trevor Zegras was fantastic for the Americans at the 2021 World Junior Championship, so I expect him to come in and be an instant impact player, but there's also decent younger players there, and still some vets like Ryan Getzlaff, but I don't think that uh, we're going to see a massive change in Anaheim this season. I don't think that Jamie Drysdale plays, and if he does, it's probably not going to be uh, in a very big role. So despite the fact that they do have good goaltending, they do have a solid defense, I look at the forward core and I think there's just too many weaknesses. You know, guys like Zagoras will make this core better in a few years, but for now, I think Anaheim is going to have a real hard time scoring goals. At number six, I have another team that's going to have a very tricky time scoring goals, and that's the Arizona Coyotes. Now, Arizona's style of play has really made them a defensive team. Uh, Darcy Kemper is one of the reasons why. Darcy Kemper is a really good goalie, and in my opinion, top 10 in the NHL. And their defense is solid as well, with the likes of Oliver ekman Larson and Jacob Chikorin. But the forward core is where there's serious questions. Phil Kessel was great in Pittsburgh, but his first year in Arizona really didn't live up to any expectations at all. So if Kessel can bounce back, maybe Arizona will be more of an offensive force uh, but you know there's other underperforming guys there like Clayton Keller and, and Nick Schmaltz so the offense there's a lot of questions there there is some good players but uh, you know it, it's kind of tricky to see where all this goal scoring is going to come from and you know when you've got such a top heavy division like this I think Arizona could end up getting a little bit buried but I have them at sixth. And at 5, I have the San Jose Sharks. Now, the San Jose Sharks have taken steps to try and improve their team this offseason, but I don't really think it's going to make all too much of a difference as I still see them missing the playoffs. Getting Devin Dubnik to be their starter isn't exactly an upgrade on Martin Jones as both those guys are kind of washed up right now. So you've got a very questionable tandem, probably one of the worst in the NHL. The defense, there's still some offensive star power there with Eric Carlson and Brent Burns, but neither of those guys are the defensemen that they used to be. And then up front, that forward core lacks a a lot of depth. You know, Logan Couture is still a very good centerman. Timo Meyer and Thomas Hurdle are two uh, good younger forwards, but that being said, there's there's not a lot of uh, offensive power there, especially when you look at how weak the bottom six is. So I just think San Jose, you know, another year of them getting older, and I get that there is some young pieces there, but I just think that this team is, is heading on a downward spiral, and they should kind of accept the rebuild. At number four, just squeaking into the playoffs, I have the Minnesota Wild. Now, the Minnesota Wild have made a lot of moves this offseason, trading out Eric Stahl and Luke Cunningham and bringing in guys like 
uh, Marcus Johansson and uh, Nick Benino. So they've definitely made a lot of moves to try and change up the a bit of the makeup of their team. I don't know if they've necessarily been the right moves, as a lot of these moves have been questionable. But I think with the rookie coming in like Kapril Kaprizov and the continued emergence of Kevin Fiala, I think this is going to be enough to squeak Minnesota in in what I think to be uh, probably the weakest division out of all four. So even though I don't think Minnesota would be a playoff team in any other division, I think with how kind of top-heavy this division is, I think they probably get in. Uh, you know, they added Cam Talbot as a goaltender, and although I don't think Talbot is a true starter, I think he's probably an upgrade on Dubnik, so he's probably going to be able to give them a few more games, and their defense is still really good as well. They recently named Jared Spurgeon captain, and I think he's a good choice. Spurgeon is probably the best defenseman on that team right now, and that's saying a lot considering guys like Ryan Suter, Matt Dumba, and Jonas Brodeen are still there. So they have one of the best top fours in all of hockey, so that's going to keep them competitive, but with guys like, you know, Kaprizov coming in, and maybe even Marco Rossi to answer that center spot, I think Minnesota will have enough to get in. And number three, I have the St. Louis Blues. Now, the St. Louis Blues have been a big story this offseason, as they did lose their captain and star defenseman, Alex Petrangelo. Uh, but that being said, they have done well to, you know, kind of recoup some of those losses. Signing Tori Krug, I think, is a very good addition. Krug is going to be able to replace the offense that Petrangelo brings, but not necessarily the leadership or defensive awareness, but that's what that's why you have guys like Colton Paranko. So, St. Louis' top four is still one of the best in the NHL. Vince Dunn is still there. He was recently signed to a one-year extension. You know, Justin Falk as well. So, their top four is still really good. Uh, I do have some questions about their goaltending, though. I still think that Jordan Bennington is a good starter, but, you know, Billy Hugh so is the backup uh, time will tell if he's going to be able to be a good backup for them. You know, he is a good prospect, but obviously an unproven goaltender, so they're really going to be relying on Bennington. Then up front, Tarasenko is probably done the entire year again. He's on the LTIR, but they did sign Mike Hoffman uh, to a professional tryout, and it sounds like they're going to get him signed on a one-year deal to kind of replace Tarasenko's goal scoring, and I think he's uh, going to be able to do that. So their forward core is still really good as well. You know, Ryan O'Reilly, Braden Shen, Jaden Swartz. So I think St. Louis is still a very good team. Is definitely definitely going to finish top three in this division, just kind of a matter of where. I think I have them at third because I look at their overall roster and I think it's still a little bit behind the two teams ahead of them, uh, but overall St. Louis is still a very, very good team. And at number two, I have the Colorado Avalanche. Now, a lot of people are picking the Colorado Avalanche to win this division, and I see why. But in all honesty, I'm also picking the Colorado Avalanche to win the Stanley Cup. And typically, teams that win the Stanley Cup don't always win the division or win the conference or anything. Uh, so I think Colorado is going to finish number two. I think their record's still going to be amazing. I think that this is going to be such a top-heavy division. Uh, the offensive uh, star power of Colorado is second to almost none in the NHL. Nathan McKinnon is a top three player in the league. Then you've also got guys like Gabriel. Landeskog, Miko Ranton, and the recently acquired Brandon Saad, and guys that have been there like Nadezhn Kadri and Andrei Burakovsky. Their top six is an absolutely lethal one. And, you know, even looking at their defense, with the addition of Devon Taves, their defense one through six is arguably the best in the NHL. Kale McCarr, you know, another year of him, he should take another step. And then there's guys like Bo and Byron that can end up coming in as well. So that defense is, is young, so it is going to make some mistakes. But when you've got guys like Eric Johnson, uh, you know, as a veteran presence, that should help out as well. Goaltending is the only area of question with the Colorado Avalanche. I think Grubauer is a decent starter, and I think with a team this good, he'll be able to put up uh, good numbers and a good record. He just has to stay healthy. The same can kind of be said uh, for Pavel Francos as a backup, but overall, I don't think that this goaltending tandem is particularly strong. It's just kind of average at best, but the rest of the team is so strong that I don't think it matters all too much. And at number one, I have the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, I think that the Vegas Golden Knights will probably win the President's Trophy. That's my prediction, at least. I think when you look at their team, you know, they did add the big fish in Alex Petrangelo. They extended Robin Leonard, so their goaltending tandem is the top five tandem in the NHL. And their forward core is lethal as well, led by guys like Mark Stone, uh, William Carlson, Riley Smith, and Max Pacioretty. Uh, now, there is some rumors that one of these guys could get moved out. You know, there was rumors that they were looking at moving at Pacioretty, and I think that would be a big blow to the regular season team. Obviously, Pacioretty doesn't perform that well in the playoffs, and as a Montreal fan, I saw that for a while, but Pacioretty's regular season numbers cannot be disputed. Uh, but I think Vegas is one of those teams that's just going to feast on these California teams and on Arizona and probably even Minnesota, and I think they're going to put up a tremendous record. Uh, their overall lineup is so strong. They're a top five team in the NHL for sure, and I can definitely see them bringing home the President's Trophy. They're going to make this division interesting. I think the games between them and Colorado and St. Louis are going to be really fun as well, and 
and the top three in this division should be uh, very competitive and likely very close. But that does it for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching till the end. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys later. Bye for now.